Don Flamenco is the first of four fights in the major circuit and introduces another in-game mechanic, retaliation punches. This is the only gimmick that Don brings, as he will never ever punch you unless you punch him first, he is returning from a knockdown, or you totally exhaust your stamina. Amongst speedrunners, this is the fastest fight in the game, more than twice as quick than the second fastest fight, Von Kaiser. The world record history of this fight is short and sweet, but there have been one or two revolutionary changes that have made this bout an easy one to perfect. This is the speedrunning history of Don Flamenco 1. Before speedrunning was even a thing, there were some pretty important tidbits of information that was known to some keen gamers. If Little Mac was at full health and you knocked down Don in under one minute, he would return to the fight with only a small amount of health. Exactly 16 health in fact. If you then knocked down Don a second time without taking damage and with the clock still under one minute, Don would stay down and you would win by knockout. Another thing that was known was the left right left right infinite combo which you could use from the start of the fight to get the first knockdown using only a single dodge. However, this was slightly slower than repeatedly forcing counter punches because if you performed a well timed quick dodge, you could get rapid punches. This is another mechanic in punch out that only featured in a few fights. When you get them, Little Mac punches almost twice as fast and in addition to this, the clock actually freezes for a few frames on each punch, saving even more time. With the knowledge of how Don's refills work and how to get rapid punches, it is likely the first world record stood somewhere in the 35 to 36 second range. An alternate phase 2 which was easier but slower was to intercept Don's uppercut with a left gut punch. Not only does this give you a star, he immediately tries to uppercut you again which means you can repeat with a left gut punch and you can continue this until he is knocked down. This was nice and all, but wouldn't lead to any new world records. A star punch that connects with Don Flamenco 1 is like one of Mike Tyson's uppercuts that hit Little Mac, a one hit knockdown. The slowest part of the Don fight was the opening, taking at least 30 seconds with rapid punches. With a star punch, phase 1 could be greatly shortened. The only conundrum was if there was a way to actually do it. It wasn't possible to force an uppercut and then intercept it with a gut punch since too many frames got wasted on the recovery from the initial punch. However, there was a way. By forcing an uppercut and then dodging, and then waiting for the absolute last frame before Don recovers, you could land a face punch and get a star, called Goldilocks. As you can see, this would result in a wicked fast 10 second knockdown. This strategy was likely discovered by Martin Charlebois back in 1998, and he was able to achieve a world record time of 14.99 seconds, which he uploaded to Red Tom's website. I can't show you the file he uploaded, but I can recreate it using tool assistance and break it down piece by piece. Martin led with a buffered left gut punch to force the uppercut. This was crucial as a left gut punch is the fastest way to get Don to retaliate. Any other punch would lose 2 frames. After dodging the uppercut, Martin then landed the 160th of a second face punch to get the star and scores the 10 second knockdown. When Don returned with his small refill, Martin performed a left quick dodger then blasted Don with rapid face punches scoring the second knockdown in under 15 seconds, setting the new world record. There was a bit of finesse involved with that left quick dodge. In most scenarios, the tighter you dodge your opponent's punch, the sooner you can punch him back, thus wasting less frames. However, dodging too tightly to Don's uppercut has a huge drawback. Too tight of a dodge will delay the onset of your rapid punches, instead forcing Mac to begin with two slow face punches before going rapid. Martin knew this, so he delayed his dodge ever so slightly in order to break the 15 second barrier. Martin's Don 1 fight was not quite yet perfect though. The quick dodge he had performed in phase 2 could have been one frame sooner, and if he had done this, he would still get the instant rapid punches and this would have been enough to bump the decimal down from a 0.99 to a 0.97, which was the theoretical limit shown by Phil and Janisto's TAS in 2004 and has remained at that limit ever since. So, 14.97 was this so-called theoretical limit, more like self-imposed limit. On December 8th, 2002, 
Eric Feliciano would post on Twin Galaxies showing his fastest times on each fight and that he had at least tied the 14.99 on Don 1. In another post on the same day, he showed the current record times on each fight, and it was Brian Sulfur who held the Don 1 world record at 14.25 seconds. Like many things back in the day, there are almost no videos, and achievements like this were passed around on good faith. In truth, scoring a time faster than the theoretical best of 14.97 was possible through the use of something called the clock stop glitch. There are a few ways to activate this glitch and I'm not going to go into all the methods right now. Basically how it works is whenever you dodge an opponent's punch, the game keeps track of how many rapid and non-rapid punches you get. Whilst doing rapid punches, if you cancel the counter punch combo by forcing Don to block, the game doesn't clear the check for if you've used all your rapid punches. Then when you throw another face punch, it's a rapid punch which as I mentioned before, freezes the clock. But this rapid punch isn't a counter punch, so the game knows it's a rapid punch and freezes the clock, but then doesn't recognise that it needs to unfreeze the clock a few frames later. With the clock stuck at 7 seconds, you then perform the rest of the fight as shown before, and times well under the aforementioned 14.97 are easily possible. Use of the clock stop glitch was sort of allowed on the Twin Galaxies website, which was the main hub for submitting gaming scores back in the day. The ruling was quite strange, stating that as long as you either restarted the clock or ended the fight within a 5 second window, it would be allowed since the glitch could be activated on accident. This is one of the dumbest rule sets I've ever read. How can 5 seconds pass if the clock is bloody stopped? Even Doctor Who can't make sense of this. This wouldn't be the dumbest thing Twin Galaxies had to do with Mike Tyson's punch out and thankfully, the old MTPO community generally didn't get involved with them and would rather use Red Tom's website to keep track of world records. Anyway, as far as records regarding the clock stop glitch, they aren't taken too seriously within the punch out community and I won't be mentioning them again in this series. To get back to Don 1, we don't actually know who got the first perfect time of 14.97 seconds. It really could have been any of the old school punch out players. Fast forwarding a decade and we land in the era where full game speedruns of Mike Tyson's punch out are kicking off. Sinister One would be the first to perform full runs of the game live on Twitch, chasing after the first ever known world record held by Matt Turk at 16 minutes and 59 seconds. In this era, speedrunning Mike Tyson's punch out was very different. Strategies were both slower and less reliable compared to their modern counterparts. Before Hippo Minippo, King Hippo was known as a massive gatekeeper, killing runs left, right and centre by not opening his big mouth. But before even getting to King Hippo, you had to get past the original gatekeeper. The Goldilocks punch was frame perfect with no easy visual cue. The only way for Sinister 1 to build any sort of consistency was to practice it relentlessly. In a run, every failed attempt costed about 7 seconds, so after 3 failed attempts, you would only end up breaking even with the much safer counter punch strategy. Alright, let's check out this Zaller video. <laughs> Full dodge where you hold left, then wait until max centers, then doing a quick dodge will get you a frame perfect star every time. Oh, it was real alright, and Sinister could not believe it. Just a week after finding a buffer for Glass Joe, Zalad1 had found a buffer to get the Goldilocks star every single time on Don Flamenco. The combination of a left gut punch, slow left dodge, quick left dodge, and a face punch was the exact amount of frames you needed to hit the final frame of Don's uppercut. Zalad had brought this ingenious tech from Super Punch Out, the game he had run prior. After this, the perfect Don time of 14.97 only required a single frame perfect input 
whilst the rest of the fight was entirely buffered, and this has led it to becoming easily the second most tied world record in Mike Tyson's punch-out, with over 100 people submitting their perfect times to speedrun.com. It's a small shame we don't know who managed to get the first 14.97, but in the grand scheme, the fight is rather trivial. The history for Don Juan was short and sweet, and the largest impact this fight has seen has been a huge increase in consistency, rather than one of optimization. Stay tuned for the rest of this series. I will be sporadically releasing other Punch-Out related videos to break it up a bit. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.